Freddie Clayton, striker, uh, normally played off the, the big guy up front. Um, 1969 was my first year and left around about 83 with a short spell for Leighton Stone after a year of being here. I was a year at Leighton Stone. When did you first realise you were a footballer? That, that's a difficult one because I never really, I used to like all sorts of sports and I didn't really consider myself good at anything. I just played them because I enjoyed them. So I never, it's for other people to say how good you are, not, you know, not me. Where did you practice as a kid? In the streets around Howard Hill. Um, quite a few friends used to stick up a couple of coats, like most kids in that, that era. Um, kick the ball on the village on the uh, green. Normally quite a lot of dogs poo, which uh, used to get on the clothes and that, but that never put us off. Only the neighbours and the neighbours' dogs busting our balls all the time. How did you get to play for Billericay? Um, I played for a team called Drummond, uh, which were in the South Essex combination, and they were based at Harold Hill. And I was used to play left back. And during about the 60, 64, 65 season, um, the centre forward that we had playing for us had a bad car accident. They asked me to play up front till they found someone that could actually play up front, um, which I did. And for that season, we used to play a team called Ardley Green amongst you know, quite a few others. And John Newman was the player manager of Ardley Green. And I didn't know John at the time but in 1969, before that season started, John would be ringing me up in the closed season and I appreciated his phone calls, but I said, I, would, I really like playing football, but I'm just playing with me mates. Anyway, John persevered and God knows how many phone calls he made to me, but I eventually said, well, okay, our season doesn't start till a little bit later. I'll come over to pre-season training and uh, see if I like it. So I weren't sure. I mean, I was pretty naive at those times. Um, and once you've been to Villariki, there's no going back. You, you know, John and the players he had put together were very, very good. Very honest players, worked hard and pre-season training was, was brilliant. So that, that I never looked back from there and, it's, and I'm so appreciative of John for sort of sticking, sticking with me and um, making me come to the club. A bit about that pitch, what was, it, what was the ground like? Well it was up again at Archer, Archer Hall, it was a bog. Um, it was a slope from one goal to the other. It was tough. The, the training, we used to do the training Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we had four chairs, four chairs from the clubhouse. I don't think cones were invented then, but we had these four chairs, and we used to run around these four chairs, and the only light we had was from the street lights on the main road. That's how it all started. Where were you living and what did you do? Lived at Harold Hill, worked as a, a cutter, dressing gown cutter at Gallows Corner. So the travel, the distance was probably 25 minutes through the country lanes to this club. Um, 
as far as work and football, it was quite easy because we didn't have big distances to travel. Yeah, did, were you ever on a wage? Um, we used to, when we moved down to New Lodge here, the, there was no money. But what does stick in my memory is the, when we, after a game, we would be sitting in that changing room and you would get a few of the supporters that could afford it, bringing in a tenner, 20, fives. And I used to look after that for the chaps and um, we used to put it behind the bar and have a drink and that's, that's all we got. What we read about the clubs? Yeah, probably the first season in our Olympian League days would be Chadwell Heath, which were an excellent side. Um, and, and since then, a few of their players did come and play for Billericay as well. Um, but they were a very, very good side. And I think we had to win our last lot of games from Christmas to actually win the league, we had to win every game, and, and fair play to the chaps, they did it. And what about later on, rivalry? Rivalries later on was always the, the Bazardon, um, and as we went through the leagues, um, you've got your Leighton Wingate, um, Edgeware were a very good side, Dave Besson actually played for Edgeware at that time. Um, Greys, there was never a Brentwood. Brentwood were a, a good side in the early days as well. They had some very good players and Dougie played for them at that particular time. Um, Dougie left and then they didn't have any good players. Well, they probably, they didn't have as many good players, let's put it that way. <laughs> did you, how did you prepare for a match? There was no real set preparation for me. I used to get up, looked so, so forward to playing. That's all I thought about all week was playing football for Billericay. Have a bacon sandwich or something, play with the kids, watch Football Focus or whatever it was there, St. and Greavesy, I think it was at that time. And then couldn't wait to get here up to the club to listen to Arthur's latest joke. Uh, and Arthur was, uh, you know, I, I still really think that John Newman got Arthur here, not just because he was a great player, but he was a great person as well and could keep the banter in that change room going. So everybody used to look forward to getting here Marvellous. Any particular standout matches other than the bars? <laughs> Not really. Not really other than the bars. They were, I mean, it used to be so enjoyable to to come up here and play every game. And, and we all socialised in the bar afterwards. Um, but there was no game that stands out other than those probably Farnborough games. Injuries? Very lucky with injuries. Uh, in the early days, hardly any. Uh, in latter years, as you get older, I suffered with hamstrings quite a bit. Um, but, but that was all very, very lucky with injuries. Did you have any superstitions before playing? Well, I didn't, I didn't, but I sprained my wrist in one of the Vars games early on in 70, probably 75, I suppose it was. And Roy Wren strapped my left wrist up and he insisted on strapping it up at every Vars game after that. 
even the final. So it was Roy Wren's super, superstition, not, not particularly mine, but I think he, he got me thinking, yeah, I'd better have it done. And in the end, I was just as keen as him to get this rip, wrist strapped up. Any, any banter sticks in your mind? Anything banter changing hands? Well, I think the boys used to have a dig at me because um, my because of my dress sense. It, it wasn't it wasn't very good, and uh, it's still not very good to this day because uh, my wife dresses me every time I come out. So, so it's her fault if there's anything wrong with me today or, or the future, but. Yeah, the boys, but it was all in, in, in great taste, all in great taste. Everyone used to take the mickey out of everyone else. But Arthur was the one that always bloody started it. Were you, were you quite fashionable? I remember you were quite fashionable because I noticed your, your sideburns and your hairstyles changing. And I would imagine maybe you were a little bit at the forefront of fashion and that used to get some stick, doesn't it? Was it? Or was it just totally vague you guys? You remember? There's usually one player that's like Leicester Foreman. It, it, wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been me. Wouldn't have been you. No. no, it wouldn't have been me. I like to think that, but it wouldn't have been me. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so tell me about Jeff. Jeff? Well, Jeff was, was great for me personally because it was like going out there onto the field of play with a minder. And nobody could touch me. If they did, then Jeff would give them a, a clump. So he looked after me, and another fella that looked after me was Mickey Payne. You know, and I was, I was the so-called ball player that was, you know, that wasn't tough, um, that, that other players would try to kick because that's the best way of stopping someone if they've got no legs. But those used to go out there thinking, I, I feel protected. So that, that helped me a tremendous amount. What about JP? JP, well, JP was our best man marker. Um, again, along with Mickey Payne, um, but JP, if there was a danger man up front, John would say, uh, JP, you pick up this guy. He's your man, don't leave him. And, and John would be tremendous at, at man marking someone out of the game. And now and again, he did get down the line and he, he did score twice, I think, in 15 or 17 years that he was here. So he, he, he does know roughly where the goal is, but he knows where their, their main man is, and that's who he kept in his pocket. What about Arthur on the pitch? Arthur was a, a leader. Um, we was all, everybody was respectful of Arthur. What he said, we did, and he was, he was John's man out on the park. Utmost respect for John in the, in the changing room, but Arthur told us what we should be doing. And when we tried to, to do as, and, and, and could read a game, cut an edible, but could read a game fantastically well and would always be there. Dougie. Dougie came along um, a few years into my uh, reign of in Billericay and Dougie was the best goal scorer and I'm, uh, I'm now thinking Jake is a tremendous goal scorer as well here at the moment but Dougie was the best goal scorer Billericay I've ever had. Dougie would be always there. I mean, he wouldn't hit a ball from 20, 30 yards. I don't think, I don't think he's ever scored from 20 or 30 yards in all the time he's been playing. Um, <laughs> one, was it? 
<laughs> I can't miss it. <laughs> oh yeah, the one at Wembley, I forgot about that. <laughs> but he was always there, always there to tap the ball in or take get in a position off of me to pass it to nice and easy and and we he was tremendous player, tremendous striker. Recollections of any of the lead up to the last matches? I think uh, Jeff touched on one uh, game we had at Cadbury, Cadbury Heath. And on the Friday, I was working in London at the time. Uh, Jeff said, oh, let's go for something to eat before we drive down to Bristol, to Cadbury. And um, I'll pay for it. So there was about four or five of us met at the Hispaniola. We had all our prawns, wonderful meal. Got in the car and travelled up to um, Bristol. And I think Arthur might have got there a bit late on that. I'm not sure if it was that one or another one, but I think Arthur had, had been also lunching in, in town. Um, I think he had more liquid than what we did um, because he turned up rather worse for wear. Um, jolly. Uh, I remember that game so well. And the, the actual next morning, we got up and we had a little training session. Then we played against Cadbury Heath and we were... We were brilliant. Wakey scored the first goal. Uh, I think I scored the second goal and Jeff scored the, the third goal. And we were that, and it wasn't until that game that I ever thought about Wembley. Now we're in the semi final because a team like Billericay Town don't go to Wembley. But it was the first time I thought this is a possibility. Yeah, so final. This, yeah, final day, first time round, what was it like? First time round, it was a, a great experience to have all this in front of us, that our imagination is telling us what it's going to be like. And we're, we're going on the coach. There's not too much chat going on. But then when you get near to the ground, you see the supporters, you see the blue and white, you see the banners, and then you pull round in the coach, go round to the side of the stadium, and you get out and the side door opens, and we all walk through and into this massive dressing room, absolutely massive dressing room, where we've got locker each well we've never been used to that lockers each sometimes we had to put our clothes on the same peg a couple of us so you know th this was all much bigger than what we had expected what about coming out of the tunnel again an amazing feeling because it all opens up you know from a small little <coughs> area that your eyes are picking up and you're walking up that tunnel and it's all opening up in front of you and then there's the crowd there as well and there's this soft grass that you walk on and you're with your mates and you're just looking around and up in amazement and how lucky we are to be able to do this, which we were. That was the first year. Do you want to know about the second year? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Second year was a bit better because we'd experienced it. The second year, I personally went round and took more in. I went and looked at the corner flags. I went and looked at the goal nets. I went and looked at the goal posts, how the nets were attached to the posts, because it's something I'd regretted not doing the first time round. And 
I think the third year, I actually said to the guys, the new guys that were playing there, you know, what to do, take it all in, because we're never going to do this again. And as Dougie said earlier, um, that he went and had a look at all the, the different, the things that you wouldn't look at normally. They took it all in and, and they were they were so pleased that they did. So, run me through the first match. The first match, um, tough game. I thought, maybe I'm a bit biased, but I thought we were the better side, although we didn't play that well. Uh, I remember getting cramp. And I only got cramp because I've seen professional footballers get cramp there before, so I thought I'd better get it. Um, but the, I, I remember Jeff's goal which was a relief more than, more than anything else. A, and a tremendous goal it was. Uh, I can remember celebrating and cheering and getting together and hugging each other. But, but sad that we didn't play as well as we could do. So what was it like, final whistle? Well, personally, I was disappointed that I hadn't scored because I was disappointed every game I didn't score anyway. So it would have been nice, you know, to play at Wembley and score. But it wasn't to be, but the the, the booby prize, if you like, was um, we won. And that was more important than personal achievements. How about the next final when you go? The next final, yeah, yeah that was a, a bit more satisfying because because I scored. Um, and it, it wasn't a great goal. It, it, you know, I seemed to head the ball. The goalkeeper dived for it and it, I think it came off my shoulder rather than anything else. I looped up. So the goalkeeper had dived but had gone too early because it it took a ricochet off my shoulder, so it wasn't a it wasn't a good goal at all, but it was an important goal. Um, and Arthur had, uh, you know, scored his own goal a little earlier, so it was nice to get a draw. Um, the the replay at Nottingham again was another place that we probably won't go and play at again. So it was nice to play there with Brian Clough, who was the manager of Nottingham Forest, and they were in their heyday at that, that particular time. And that was a, a marvellous experience because, again, we, we won. But at Wembley, again, we, we, we didn't play as well as we could do. And, and that, was, that was sad. Um, what about the presentations? Which one? I think the last one probably stands out more because there was more satisfaction with the last one because we actually played tremendous. And, and that was a kind of relief as well because we'd been there twice before and not done ourselves justice. Um, but the last one, Dougie's hat-trick, I actually scored as well. Um, and we were we were brilliant that day, and it was nice that Mark Carrigan, who was sub, um, got a, a few minutes at the end. And we always rib Davy Groom because Davy was the one that was taken off so that Mark could play the last couple of minutes. Yeah, you go. Know. Uh, the. The goal in the 1979 final was uh, a masterpiece. Not particularly because I scored it, but because it was a, a planned move that has been practiced many hours 
on the training ground and it would be where, I think it was Dougie on this occasion, would go in, take the defenders who were marking him in there, then come back out and block the player that was marking me. I would then go into the empty space where Paul Scott had passed the ball into and it was a, an easy an easy tapping. So after party? Well, Villaricky were very good at parties. Um, we had a lot of practice. There was a lot to celebrate over the years that I particularly played here. And everybody enjoyed each other's company. And even I, from the first early days till when I left, the, the atmosphere amongst the players was brilliant, second to none. Everybody loved being with each other. And there was no, there was no jealousies uh, with anybody. anybody. Everybody just loved each other and loved each other to do well. Can you remember anything about any special moments about the open, open top passes? Yes. In 1969, our last game was in the Olympian League, was against a team called Burnham Ramblers. We decided that we would go from the ground and we would go in this open top bus to Burnham Ramblers. We, we had to win it to win the league and we won 2 0, I think it was. So we came back. We got to the clubhouse and we said, let's go through the town. So we came out of the club, went up Western Road in this open top bus and there's all 12 players up there shouting and screaming. Nobody had a clue what we were screaming about. We got up to the lights turned right at the lights, we went up the high street, again, everyone was looking but didn't know why we was all shouting. We ended up in the Rising Sun, which was on the corner, and we went in there and celebrated. Now, compare that with when we got on the bus in 1976, a few years later, we went up Western Road, we turned right at the lights, and we could not see the high street. It was a mass of people. And we all looked at each other and said, wow, this is for us. And I, th I thought back to the days, you know, six, seven years earlier, when there was nobody there and there. We could not see the high street. It was just a mass of people and they followed us up through the high street. I think the, uh, the high street, well, it must have been closed off to traffic because uh, there was just people all over. I don't know, Rob, you, was you one of them? Yeah. <laughs> Have you got any souvenirs from the day and where are they? No souvenirs, only three bundles. What do you think of those medals? That, that's, that's something... Um, I have one of them. My, my two sons have the others. And it's only a, a few years from now that I'll be giving him my one to my grandson. And that will be it, and they can uh, treasure them.
I have something to remember me by. Um, what about Berkey fans? Well, I, I didn't consider them as fans, to be honest. Um, they were just part of the, the wave of our success. You know, they used to drink with us. They used to have jokes with us. And, and they were just part of us. So that they weren't fans, they were family. You know, I, I can't say enough for them because they kept us. Obviously, you you know you can't do it on your own out there. Um, the crowd were were phenomenal people. They weren't football fans; they were people to us. What's your most prized memory from all your time? There's so many. Prize memory. Wow. I, I, I've got so, so many memories of this club that that there's no, there's not one, even the Wembley games don't stand out as a, as a special memory. I just had so many friends here and, and, and to be able to play for a, a side like Billericay Town was a pleasure, it was an honour. In a hundred years time from now, what's your legacy, would you, how do you want to be remembered? Um, just part of, part of the history of this great club because, you know, and hopefully people will remember these days in a hundred years time and we'll have because of social media we'll have the names that they can look at a hundred years ago I don't know who was playing for Billericay but hopefully a hundred years from now they'll say oh oh Freddie Clayton That, that's all. That's all. And uh, any comment on I know you said about Jake Robinson? Or what are your thoughts on on he's obviously the direct comparison with uh, where we are today is Jake. I've seen Jake play probably four or five times now, and I'm in awe of him. What a goal scorer! What a player! And he seems to enjoy his football, like we did. And I hope he stays. I would like to just say one thing. Um, this this club wouldn't wouldn't be here, let alone be as successful as it is at the moment. It wouldn't be here, but for John Newman. Uh, John, uh, and I probably didn't realise this until many years later, because all I did was play here and enjoyed the times here. But John created the team, got the club on the right road, picked up ideas of football very quickly, and not just football, but the way players should um, conduct themselves. Uh, we learnt a lot from a team called Farnborough Town. They came here. We, we had, we, we saw them come on the coach. The players saw them come in and they're all dressed in grey flannels, white shirts, blazers, ties. Um, us players looked at each other and thought, we're in for problems here. Well, then John saw that 
instigated that we would do that the next year. And we did. But behind the scenes, I'm sure John was talking to the committee all the time and getting them to do things. And John was a, a man's man. Everybody that came here and played here played for John. Because that is why they came initially, because of John Newman. And as much as Glenn has done for this club, it wouldn't even be here if John Newman hadn't decided that he would manage the club in 1969.